Hello, my name is Martha Mather and I'm a fish ecologist at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I have had the great pleasure uh, over the last five or six years of working with the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries on striped bass distribution and abundance and particularly their foraging ecology. My colleague in much of what I'm going to tell you about today is Kristen Ferry who did this for her master's degree and is presently employed by the Division of Marine Fisheries. Recently, working at some more sophisticated distributional studies, I have the great pleasure of working with the Plum Island Long-Term Ecological Research Group in the Rowley River, Plum Island Sound area. Today I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the initial work we did on generally how are they distributed, some thoughts on migration, habitat use, and foraging. The striped bass that we see in Massachusetts actually don't live in Massachusetts. They were born and spend the winter in Chesapeake Bay, Delaware Bay, or the Hudson River. But in the spring, many of them come north and feed in the Massachusetts estuaries. So as we think about this migration, we can make some comparisons with how humans choose their seasonal travel locations. And many of you know about how you decide on where you would like to vacation. We're going to use the same ideas to try and understand why the striped bass might come and spend their summer vacation in Massachusetts. So as we look at this map of what we call the coastal migratory stock of striped bass, we can see that there are three primary spawning locations, the Chesapeake, the Delaware, and the Hudson. Typically, we think that most of the migratory stock, that would be the fish that are found in the ocean, are coming from the Chesapeake Bay. Often we say 80 to 85 percent are from the Chesapeake Bay, about 15 percent from the Hudson, and the Delaware is just starting to come back. However, these percentages do change across time. All of these fish, however, will come out of their spawning areas and come north, and we see them in Massachusetts around May or June. We don't really know why they migrate, but we think that it has to do with feeding. We think that these fish are moving north and staying off of the Massachusetts, New England area because there is abundant high quality food. And so we are testing some ideas about the feeding choices that the striped bass have in New England. As we think about why striped bass might migrate, we are interested in conditions that might help them to be large. Growth is very important for fish, and one factor that is very important in influencing a fish's growth and size is temperature. This is important because fish are ectotherms. That is, their body temperature is the same as the water temperature, and this temperature affects how much food they can eat and how fast they can grow. So as we think about what areas they choose to come to vacation, we need to think about what temperatures are good for them, what temperatures are not good for them, and so we'll talk about what temperatures are important to a striped bass. As with all fish, there are certain temperatures at which they do better, grow faster, are more comfortable and hence may select in the field and these temperatures will change seasonally. So what we have shown here is results of a laboratory and a field study. In the laboratory study people have shown that between 54 and 77 the fish can grow quite well if there is adequate food. They have also shown in the field that very often the fish will select temperatures of 72 degrees. It's important to note, however, that these are just general recommendations, but as you think about fish movements, you should be looking at temperature. 
So here you just see another gradation of that broad temperature range at which striped bass grow well. So what Kristen and I did was put continuously recording thermometers in many estuaries along the Massachusetts coast and we got a seasonal record of how warm or cool the estuary was. Here you see the record for the Rowley River in northeastern Massachusetts and you can see that in spring the temperature is within the range of optimal growth and a little bit below that which is selected as optimal habitat. In the summer it's still within the range of optimal growth, but in late fall, it does start to get uh, too cold. I think from the Rowley River, we do conclude that it's a pretty good thermal environment for the fish. We see a very different pattern in the Westport River, which is in the Buzzards Bay area in South Massachusetts. We see that very often in the summer, the temperature is too warm for growth and we think that this very likely affects where the fish are and how they grow. One of the things that Kristen Ferry did for her master's degree was in 13 estuaries along the coast she collected striped bass across three seasons and looked at what they were eating and the technique that she's using here is called gastric lavage or stomach pumping. So this fish has been anesthetized so it is still alive but it is not moving on the measuring board and she is inserting a tube into its mouth with water and this is causing it to regurgitate or throw up its meal in the white bucket to the side of the fish you can see what it just recently ate. The very nice thing about this technique is very shortly after this process the fish will awake from its anesthetic and it will be put back into the estuary and it will swim around to feed another day. So I'd like to tell you now a little bit about some of the things that we found as Kristen asked the fish to donate their lunch so that we could learn the kinds of things that they eat. These are schooly or s smaller striped bass. They are still adult fish, but you can see in Massachusetts estuaries they eat a variety of food. M some of the things that we found were mummy chogs, silver sides, sand lance, and in the spring river herring. You're also going to see some pictures of crabs, shrimp, and menhaden, which were also quite popular food items. So you can see they're a diverse feeder. This is an example of one of the kinds of diets that we saw. Uh, and you can see there a mix of crabs, shrimp, and fish that are digested 